Hi and welcome to what will be the first of four short reflections uh, on Good Friday and the work of the cross. I'm Martin, I'm the minister of Oundle Baptist Church and uh, this will be the first of the reflections and then join us again for one o'clock, two o'clock and three o'clock uh, for three other short reflections on the work of the cross. So let me begin by reading to you from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse 27. Then Pilate, then Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's palace, and the whole company gathered round him. They stripped off his clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. Then they made a crown of thorny branches and placed it on his head and put a stick in his right hand. Then they knelt before him and mocked him. Long live the king of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the stick and hit him over the head. When they had finished mocking him, they took the robe and put put his own clothes back on him then to crucify him as they were going out they met a man from cyrene named simon and the soldiers forced him to carry jesus's cross they came to a place called golgotha which means the place of the skull there they offered jesus wine mixed with a bitter substance but after tasting it he would not drink it. They crucified him and then divided his clothes among them by throwing dice. After that they sat there and watched him. Above his head they put the written notice of the accusation against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then they crucified him. Then they crucified two bandits with Jesus, one on his right and the other on his left. What a powerful passage of scripture that is. And the passage starts with Pilate's soldiers mocking Jesus, taking him away and mocking him. They strip him, they put a robe around him, a crown of thorns is placed on his head and they put a stick in his hands and then after this mock worship they beat him before leading him out to the cross to die you see for the soldiers jesus is nothing more than a rebel who stirred up people against rome by his teachings he will soon be a problem no longer when they take him out to die the is with declaring Jesus's so-called crimes. Jesus, the King of the Jews, it says. But what I find interesting is that the sign that the soldiers read as a crime, well, for Matthew and for us, that sign is a declaration of the truth. Jesus is the King, not just for the Jews but for all who will believe and follow him. The crucifixion is the means by which Jesus establishes his kingdom. His kingdom doesn't come about by force as people were expecting or wanting or demanding, but rather his kingdom is established by service, by sacrifice and by his self-giving love and you know what even in his death especially in his death Jesus is modeling to us the path that we must tread Jesus has spoken time and again about what it means to be a disciple and here he models how we need to be Jesus gives himself up for us and calls on us to give ourselves to him. 
to give our time, to give our talents, to give our lives to his service and to his kingdom. The crown of thorns was used to mock Jesus. The sign was used to mark him out as a criminal. But what really happens is the crown of thorns demonstrates that his kingdom is not one built on fame and on status, but one built on humility and on suffering and on service. And the sign declares what we now know for ourselves. Jesus is King. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, broken for us, remind us that the cross was not the end, that from death came life, from despair hope, and from sorrow joy, your love bringing new beginnings. And remind us above all that this same love is still at work, here and now today, able to take broken people, broken lives, and make them whole. Amen. Thank you for joining me at 12. The next three will be over on the St Peter's page, so join us again at 1 and 2 and 3 as we continue to reflect on the work of the cross. Thank you.